so what we are going to today is the new chapter we are going to start the chemical bonding and molecular structure now the basics of this how bonding is formed the different types of bonds formed all we have studied in 10th class that is ionic bond covalent bond and what are ionic bonds how are they formed what which type of elements under what conditions they form ionic compounds then which type of elements will form covalent compounds under what conditions covalent form bonds are formed and the properties of ionic and covalent compounds all we have seen in 10th class now we are going to see a next topic that is uh, the a little bit more about these two and some more theories for this covalent sorry this uh, chemical bonding now why do elements combine that is the first question see first and how the compounds are formed closel and closel gave the first ex uh, explanation for the bonding in covalent in compounds now we see, we have seen that the 18th group elements that is the helium neon argon krypton etc except helium all the other elements are having eight electrons in the outermost shell they are having eight electrons in the outermost shell since they have eight electrons in the outermost shell they are chemically inert so a new theory called octet theory was put forward that is elements combine to form other elements who are not stable or the which which are not having eight electrons in the outermost shell they react to form compounds because they must they need eight electrons in the outermost shell so that they can attain stability they can be of chemically inert so other elements which are not having eight electrons they try to have eight electrons in the outermost shell so this is the basis of octet theory the theory says if an atom if it is having eight electrons in the outermost shell it is chemically inert so other the elements which are not having eight electrons in the outermost shell they try to have it eight electrons in the outermost shell either by losing gaining or sharing of electrons so first we will see the type of bond we have studied that is ionic bond now which type of elements will form ionic bond or how are ionic bond forms ionic bond is formed when ions are formed now how are ions formed ions are formed when atoms either lose or gain electrons when atoms lose or gain electrons ions are formed charged particle there are two different ions cations and anions the cations are formed when an atom cations are positively charged ions they are formed when atoms lose electron for example we have seen sodium sodium is having the configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 that is 11 electrons are there this is the electronic configuration now if it loses this one electron it will have the configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 that is the configuration of neon this is the configuration of sodium so if it loses this one electron it will have the configuration of neon the nearest inert gas so what sodium always try to do, do it will always try to lose one electron so sodium will lose one electron then when sodium is having 11 electrons and 11 protons now if it loses one electron it will have 10 electrons and 11 protons that means 10 electrons and 11 protons that means one proton is in excess so it will have a positive charge so sodium will become a sodium ion a cation plus electron so sodium always will try to lose electron whenever it gets a chance it will try to lose electron and it will form to have that because why it is losing electron because it will be having the nearest inert gas configuration now what about the chlorine chlorine is having the atomic number 17 so it has 17 electrons so configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p5 this is the electronic configuration 3p5 this is the electronic configuration of chlorine so if 
chlorine is getting one electron it will have the p6 configuration which is the configuration of the argon the next inert gas next inert gas configuration is 1s2 3s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 so if chlorine gains one electron it will have the configuration of argon so what will chlorine always do it will try to gain one electron chlorine always will try to gain electron so what will happen when it wants gain one electron that is another question now chlorine is having 17 protons and 17 electrons now it accepted one electron now it became 18 electrons and 17 protons so that means one electron is in excess one negative charge in excess so chlorine will have a now the chlorine atom is no, no, no longer it is neutral it will have a negative charge so chlorine will become chloride ion plus chloride ion when it accepts one electron now we got an a cation with a positive charge that is sodium ion and an anion that is negatively charged ion and whenever two oppositely charged ion they will be held together by an electrostatic force of attraction and that electrostatic force of attraction which is holding these ions together is called the ionic bond or electrovalent bond. So the ionic bond is formed whenever ions are formed and the electrostatic force of attraction between the oppositely charged ions is called ionic bond. When the, when the ions form, when atoms are ready to lose or gain electron, they, they are forming ions. That is cation is formed whenever an atom loses electron and anion is formed whenever atoms gain electron and you are getting oppositely charged ions and they are held together by an electrostatic force of attraction and that electrostatic force of attraction is called an ionic bond. Okay, this is this at least we have studied last year. Now the question is, what are the energy change that is taking place during the formation of an ionic compound? You know that the sodium, sodium atom cannot lose electron. Sodium solid atom, in solid state it cannot. So what will happen? But first sodium solid state, it must be converted to sodium to vapor stage. Right? That is vapor state, it must come then gaseous state. Now sodium gaseous state will now lose one electron to become sodium ion plus electron in gaseous state. For that also it requires energy. Then so sodium ion is formed. Now chlorine gas, chlorine gas will have to split to become chlorine atom. Chlorine molecule will have to split into chlorine atom if it is in gaseous state, so we need to change to gaseous state. Now the chlorine atom, one electron to be added, you will get the chloride ion. Then that also in gaseous state. Now from the sodium ion and the chloride ion in gaseous state, we must make a sodium chloride molecule in solid state for again there is some energy change. So the total of all this energy will be the when an ionic bond is formed. So when, when the ionic compound which is formed will be highly stable. If the energy released is greater than the energy accepted. Understood? There are certain energies, certain energy will have to supply to the atom and there are certain energies which will be released. Now we will see what are the energies to be supplied. See when sodium solid to become sodium gaseous state. A solid if you want to convert to gaseous state you will have to give energy. Isn't it? So this, this is positive. We are giving energy. Delta H I told you now onwards energy will be re, uh, written as like this. Now sodium gas will be given and it will be converted to sodium ion. Yesterday we have studied. Ionic, sorry, whenever an ion is to be released, we will have to supply energy because electrons are electrons are attracted towards the nucleus with a attractive force. There is nuclear charge. If electron will have to come out, we will have to supply some energy and that energy is supplied to release one electron from the outermost shell of a gaseous isolated atom is called ionization enthalpy. So this is the ionization enthalpy I will have to give ionization enthalpy. So sodium ion in gaseous state is formed. 
Now, chlorine gas to become chlorine or chlorine molecules to become chlorine gas. Again, we will have to supply energy, we will have to break that bond, isn't it? We will have to break the bond between two chlorine atoms and make it chlorine atoms in the chlorine molecule to make it chlorine atoms. So, there also we will have to supply some energy. Now, when chlorine is accepting electron, it is chloride ion, it is becoming highly stable. So, energy will be released. That energy is called electron gain enthalpy. So, it is delta H, this is the energy released. Now, these three energies we are supplying. This energy, it is released. It is releasing, isn't it? Now, here you see the sodium ion and the chloride ion in gaseous state now to become sodium chloride a solid. Then energy will be released. The released energy will be in crystalline solid. So that when a crystalline solid is formed from the constituent ions, energy will be released because they, they are attracted by electrostatic force of attraction. So their energy is always released. So this energy released when one mole of an ionic compound is formed from the constituent ions is called lattice enthalpy. It is called lattice enthalpy. So lattice enthalpy is the energy released when one mole of a crystalline ionic substance is formed from its constituent ions. So this is minus delta H lattice enthalpy. So here you see these three are energy absorbed and these two are the energies released. So, and if the energy, some of the energy released is greater than the energy absorbed, then the molecule or sorry, the ionic compound formed will be highly stable. So, usually it is like that when an ionic compound is formed, the energy released will be always greater than the energy it is absorbing to form the compound. Understood? So this is how a compound, any compound is formed and these are the energy changes that is taking place. So like this, this is the sodium uh, solid, we will have to break in the sodium atoms for that we will have to supply energy that sodium gaseous state to become, to become sodium ion in gaseous state, we will have to supply energy that is called ionization enthalpy. Then chlorine gas to become chlorine molecule to become chlorine atoms, we will have to supply energy that chlorine atom when it accepts one electron to become chloride ion, some energy will be released and that is called electron gain enthalpy and from one mole of sodium ions and chloride ions if sodium chloride solid, crystalline solid is formed, energy will be released that is called lattice enthalpy. That also is the energy released and some of these two energy released will be greater than the sum of energy it is accepting or absorbing then if it is greater then the compound the uh, ionic compound formed will be highly stable so this is how an ionic compound is formed and these are the energy changes taking place for each and every ionic compound such energy changes are taking place okay so this is an ionic compound and you know that the properties of ionic compounds they are having crystalline structure they, listen, they have very closely uh, let's see, packed crystalline structure they, were, they have high melting and boiling point they are highly soluble in water then they are um, bad conductors in solid state but they are good conductors in aqueous or the solution state so this is about the ionic bone. Now we have next type of bone that is covalent bone. Covalent bone. Now how is so and now we have seen when ion atoms are ready to lose or gain electron. Suppose atoms are not ready to gain or lose electron, then what will happen? Suppose two chlorine atoms are coming together, coming near. Both the chlorine atoms are having seven electrons in the outermost shell. They are having seven electrons in the outermost shell. No atom is ready to give, no atom is ready to accept. So what will happen? They each atom will give one electron and they share this electron and a bond is formed. This bond is called 
one electron, this lower magnet will give, one electron, this lower magnet will give, this lower magnet will have eight electrons, and this also will form eight, have eight electrons. So this one pair of electron is shared between two chloride atoms and that is called the, the share. This share, this electrons are sharing and this shared electron that is keeping the atoms together, holding them together and this pair of electron shared between them is called the covalent bond. The covalent bond since only one pair of electron is formed this is called a single covalent bond. Then a single bond C. This is a single covalent bond. So a single covalent bond is formed. That this pair of electron is keeping the two chlorine atoms together. So it is called a single covalent. Then you take oxygen. In oxygen, oxygen is having six electrons in the outermost shell. The other oxygen atom also having six electrons. That each oxygen atom will give a pair of electron and the two oxygen atoms will share this pair of electron and you will have a the two oxygen atoms will share the two pairs of electron between them so this oxygen is having 4 plus 2 plus 2 8 electron this oxygen is also having 4 plus 2 plus 2, 8 electrons. Both of them are having 8 electrons. They are sharing two pairs of electrons. So this is a double covalent bond, which is represented by two lines. Two lines between the two atoms. And each line represents a pair of electrons. Now we'll take the case of nitrogen molecule. Each nitrogen is having nitrogen molecule N2. This nitrogen is having five electrons in the outermost shell. So, but we, each nitrogen will give three pairs of electrons there. And they will share the three pairs of electrons between them. See? So, this is one pair, second pair, third pair. So, nitrogen is having a triple covalent bond between the two atoms. So this is N triple bond N. This is a covalent. So, so this is how a covalent bond is formed by sharing of electron pairs. Now we'll take another example of methane. Methane, carbon atom. This is a heteronuclear molecule. Heteronuclear molecules means molecule which are made up of different atoms. Here, we, uh, this is this is a homonuclear molecule which is made up of a single type of atom. So this is called a homonuclear molecule. This is called a heteronuclear molecules. We have four carbon. That each hydrogen is having one electron. Then hydrogen will give its one electron. Hydrogen will give the one electron. And as you see, this carbon now it is sharing four one electron each with each hydrogen. So it is giving getting four pairs of electron. Each hydrogen is having two electrons, so both of them are satisfied, so we get CH4 molecule with the four hydrogen atoms. Then ammonia molecule, these are all what we have studied in the 10th class. Ammonia molecule, nitrogen is having five electrons, and three electrons it is sharing with the three hydrogen atoms. See, one one electron it will share with one one hydrogen atoms, you see. How many? Four pairs now we've got, and each hydrogen is having two electrons and it is having eight electrons. See, this is ammonia molecule. That's how ammonia molecule is formed by covalent bond. So covalent bond means it is the it is formed by sharing pairs of electrons. And what are the properties of covalent molecules? They are existing as molecules, and usually they are either gases or liquids or solids with a low melting and boiling point because intermolecular force of attraction is very weak. Now, <clears throat> they are bad conductors of electricity. They are insoluble in water. They are soluble only in organic solvents like alcohol, ether, etc. So these are the properties of covalent compounds.